2014 Level 2 Mechanics, question 2 at the gym. Jamie's doing a workout. He's using a barbell with weights on it. The total mass of the bar with weights, 120 kgs. Okay, and we can't show the picture, but you can imagine a person doing weights. There's the barbell, there's their arms trying to hold it. Okay, calculate the work done on the bar if Jamie lifts at 0.55 meters vertically at a constant speed. So, uh, standard calculation, work equals force times distance, force equals mg. So mg times distance, um, there's our mass, g is gravity, distance is 0.55 metres. Um, B, Jamie puts the barbell on two supports and changes the weights on the bar. With no weights on one end and a 30 kg weight on the other end, the support force provided by the right hand support is zero. So that's the, whoops, uh, made you probably make your eyes water with that. There is um, zero support force here, if s equals zero at that point. Um, draw labelled arrows on the diagram showing the forces on the bar. Um, use the concept of torque to calculate the weight of the bar. Assume it is a uniform bar. So we've got two um, two masses here. We've got the force uh, of the of the mass, uh, the weight on the end. We've got the force of the bar, and we've got the one support force, which should be equal to. Um, We'll call that Fs, and this one we'll just call it zero because it's zero there. Um, that Fs should be an arrow length, the, um, the uh, force of the mass plus the force of the bar combined. So it should be quite a bit you know, um, bigger than either of them and the sum of them both. Use the concept of torque to calculate the weight of the bar, assumed as a uniform bar. Okay, so <coughs> the easiest thing to do is to take a pivot point right at the centre here so that that support force is eliminated from our equation and then we should have um, the, the distance here um, of uh, it's been given, so it's 45 centimetres from vertically there to the centre, half of that 90 so that force of the bar times that distance um, should be equal to that 15 centimetre distance times the force of the mass, which is 30 times 9.8, 9.81, if you're being three significant figures. Um, so let's just write that out. Uh, 30 times 9.81 times by 0 0.15 centimetres, um, metres I should say. So that's the left hand side torque going around that way. And the right hand side torque is um, force of the bar, which we don't know, we're trying to find out, times by 0 0.45, um, which is 45 centimetres and metres. That's the turning pointer of that way. Um, so you've only got one unknown there, rearrange and, and calculate for that. See, after doing some weights, Jamie goes across to the punch bag, which is, usually, which is a large bag hanging from a chain, you know how these work. Bag has a mass of 35 kgs. Jamie pulls the bag horizontally using the rope tied to a ring at the top of the bag until the chain is at an angle of 30 degrees to the vertical, as shown in the diagram opposite. So we could have kind of eliminated all of that diagram and read it, uh, all of that text, and just use the diagram below. Um, it says draw the three forces acting on the ring at the top of the bag. Here's the ring. So. Um, and then it's going to get us to do a vector one, so I'll draw them over the top here. We've got the force here being pulled. It doesn't tell us to label them, but we might call that force of Jamie. Here we've got the force of the bag. And then we've got a tension force in the chain. Part two is drawing a vector addition diagram with three forces. Determine the size of the tension force on the chain. So the tension force should be equal and opposite to the other two added together. So we can um, construct our diagram like that. Um, uh, so yeah, um, this is negative Ft, and negative just purely for the direction, and this is negative Fg, uh, B, again purely the direction. Um, we know the mass of the bag is 35 kgs, uh, so that's this one here, so that's 35 times 9.81. Um, we know what do we know? Oh, we don't know um, the force that Jamie is using, but we do know it's 30 degrees here. So we've got a nice little bit of trig to help us do the calculation. Um, what are we after? Just the, yeah, the tension force in the chain. So we're trying to find this length here. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and 
we can, where are we? Uh, this is a cos, so I'll just give you this part. Cos 30 degrees equals adjacent over hypotenuse, which is all of this, over the tension force. Rearrange that and you'll get your, your answer. Um, yeah. If we're being really pedantic, we would put that as there, uh, plus there as well, by the way. D. Jamie punches the bag horizontally, then puts on a glove with a um, thick padding and punches the bag at the end of the same velocity. Discuss the difference between the two punches in terms of the stopping time of his fist and the force of the bag. Um, so first one is a glove with thick padding, second one is um, with, with no glove. Okay, so you draw a little table here, you've got glove, no glove, and naturally you would think that with a glove it's going to be a softer hit, so you're not going to feel the forces as much. We need to get into it with physics. If we look at um, the idea of impulse, um, using the glove it's going to increase the amount of time, therefore it's going to decrease the amount of force for the same change of momentum. With no glove, um, that, that change in time is going to be much smaller, so the force is going to be larger, and um, you'll have the same change of momentum, of course, but with a larger force, um, you're going to have uh, more um, chance of damage, uh, which is going beyond the, what the question's asking. If you're stating any assumptions, I guess that, that the punch is consistent. Punch is consistent. So, same, um, I guess, applied momentum uh, initially for each case. There we go, I think that's the last question.